Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about two of the best athletes of their eras. Manny Pacquiao, right, who now is trying to explain away his loss to Floyd Mayweather, and Tom Brady. Right, let's first just contrast Manny Pacquiao with a boxing great, Jack Dempsey. Now understand when Jack Dempsey was the heavyweight champion in the Roaring Twenties, boxing had never had a cash cow fighter, a fighter who brought in more revenue on this level ever before Jack Dempsey. Some earlier fights were lucrative, no question about it, but understand Dempsey fights set new standards for the sport of boxing. Right, Dempsey was one of the major athletes of the golden era. He had several fights that were big, big, lucrative, trailblazing fights. So then he faces Gene Tunney. He was supposed to roll over Tunney. Instead, he loses his title. Now after that fight, when he gets to the dressing room and he meets up with his wife, Jack Dempsey had an explanation for his loss. Right? Jack Dempsey, in explaining the loss to his wife, said simply, Honey, I forgot to duck. Right? Now compare and contrast that with Manny Pacquiao. By far. <coughs> The worst performance of Manny Pacquiao's career, it's not even close, <coughs> the absolute worst performance of Manny Pacquiao's career is taking place right now after his fight with Floyd Mayweather. It's terrible. I'm telling you, this is shocking to those of us who respect Manny Pacquiao as a man. For him to be trying to claim that he was injured and that the injury is why he lost to Floyd Mayweather and that he had this injury when he entered the ring, even though he didn't share this injury with the Nevada State Athletic Commission until less than two hours before the fight, is simply mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. Let me tell you, Andre Ward had a trick shoulder. You never heard about it. Andre Ward fought several fights with a trick shoulder. You never heard about it. Right? Andre Ward then had surgery on the shoulder. Right? It seems to me, just the view from the bleacher seats, that Manny Pacquiao's shoulder had absolutely nothing to do with him getting his butt kicked by Floyd Mayweather. Right? He throws that right hand several times in the fight. The right hand is his off hand. He keeps getting hit with Floyd's straight right hand. Right? That's what costs him the fight. His inability to deal with Floyd's straight right hand, his inability to get inside. His lack of defense, which is structural, not shoulder related. A skeptic might argue, and by skeptic I mean what I'm thinking here, right? Just speculation on my part. That this post fight explanation was thought of before the fight. Because Manny understood that eventually, just like with Andre Ward, he would need surgery on that shoulder. He understood that. Let me tell you, there are many fighters fighting right now who understand that eventually someday they're going to need surgery on certain body parts. That's just the nature of the sport, right? It's just like NFL players who understand that down the road they're going to need knee replacements, right? You understand that some body part is not a hundred percent, but you're in the middle of an athletic career. 
right? It seems to me that Manny Pacquiao before the fight, knowing that he needed shoulder surgery, right? In fact, his promoter is claiming that an MRI showed a tear in the shoulder, right? I believe Manny Pacquiao, and again, it's a speculation on my part, before the fight, knew that if he came out in the fight and didn't look good, he could then blame his shoulder after the fight. Let's just say that Manny Pacquiao at this point doesn't look like the man Jack Dempsey was. Right? Let's just say Manny Pacquiao doesn't seem to have the level of accountability of Jack Dempsey. Let's talk about Tom Brady. You know, the big problem with Brady is the neighborhood he's in, isn't it? Right? When we talk about Tom Brady, we're not talking about the average quarterback. The neighborhood he's in, right, is the neighborhood of Otto Graham, Johnny Unitas, Joe Montana, right? We're not expecting good from Tom Brady. We're expecting great from Tom Brady. He's in the very short conversation of the best quarterbacks in history. Right? You don't mention Otto Graham, Johnny Unitas, Joe Montana, unless you're talking about someone who's not a flavor of the month or a flavor of the year, but a guy who's put together at least a decade of dominance. Right? So, our expectations of Tom Brady are high. If we're going to treat him like a football god, then he's going to have to meet godlike standards, isn't he? Now, here he's fallen far short, and it's astonishing. Right? He's one of the few people who may have actually had a worse week than Manny Pacquiao, who may have done more damage to his reputation than Manny Pacquiao. Right? I believe the press really has gotten this wrong. I think there's a bias in the media. Right? These stations that have deals with the NFL, that pay licensing fees to the NFL to broadcast NFL games, right, to get access to NFL personnel, right, they're doing everything possible to protect the NFL brand, aren't they? Right, unfortunately, marketing the NFL doesn't always coincide with the truth. So let's be blunt here. Right? Using deflated balls in a conference championship game is one of the worst infractions I know of in sports history. Right? Could you imagine if news came out today that Otto Graham in a championship game was using illegal balls and participated in making the balls illegal? Could you imagine if that was the claim against Johnny Unitas or Joe Montana? In fact, why am I calling it a claim? Because isn't it, according to the NFL's own investigator, more probable than not that Tom Brady participated in using illegal balls. Tom Brady participated in making them illegal. The infraction is so serious. It's so serious that Tom Brady felt the need to lie about it. This isn't pine tar on a bat. It's not. 
right? This isn't wearing spikes that might be a little bit too long. This is much worse. This is so bad that Tom Brady at the time understood that he couldn't laugh it off. That he had to lie about it. He understood that if he owned up to this infraction, he could have missed the Super Bowl. He could have been suspended. Now I'm listening to media reports where some ex-jocks are saying, what's the big deal? The Pats blew out the Colts. Who cares if Brady was using balls that were a little bit deflated? Folks, we know the inflation levels of the ball can give you a competitive advantage. We know that because the NFL has rules in the books that outlaw this kind of thing. The NFL has a protocol in the books that talks about how the balls are to be inflated and inspected. Right? We know this kind of chicanery gives a quarterback who prefers a soft ball an unfair advantage. We know that. Understand the precision needed for the Patriots to pull off the deflation. Right? Look at the timeline. The Patriot employee is missing in the bathroom for less than two minutes. This is almost like a scene out of the movie Ocean's Eleven. You're committing a crime. It has to be done within a particular timeline to pull it off. The benefits of committing the crime are so good that you literally plan it, have it set up, so you can then duck into the bathroom with the balls and emerge from the bathroom less than two minutes later because you know if you're in the bathroom for five, six minutes, someone's going to come looking for you, you're going to get busted, then there's going to be hell to pay. Right? So the crime is terrible. Forget Brady's lying to the press afterwards. The crime is terrible. The crime by itself requires a multi-game suspension. Understand, even if Brady would have said, okay, you got me. I knew about it. I talked with Tom, Dick, and Harry, and I told them, look, man, I'll give you autograph footballs, which is what he did, by the way. I'll give you autograph footballs. If you guys hook me up here, give me the hookup so I could, you know, have softballs for this championship game. If he came out and did a mea culpa, I did it, I'm guilty, he would still have to be suspended multiple games. Even if he accepted responsibility because the crime is that bad. You can't rob a bank and then say, okay, Okay, I was the one robbing the bank. Give me a slap on the wrist. I got a game next week. That's not the way it works. But here, understand, Tom Brady has done something even worse than that, hasn't he? Tom Brady has tried to cover it up. Right, folks, the cover-up deserves additional punishment. Right, if I rob a bank... And I'm leaving the bank. Then the cops pull up. Okay, I have a choice at that point. I could say, okay, look, you got me. Go ahead, handcuff me. I plead guilty. Okay, at that point, my offense is just robbing the bank. But if when I see the cop cars pull up, I say, oh, man, I'm going to get my ass out of here. I then hop in the getaway car. We drive through town, right? I have the cops chasing me on some high-powered, long-distance getaway, right? At that point, I'm also evading arrest. At that point, the original crimes compounded. Now, here, Tom Brady, and it's disconcerting. 
Here Tom Brady uses his media-friendly persona to literally lie to us. Brady, who's texting, who is calling, who is giving side memorabilia to the guys who are deflating the footballs. Brady tells investigators, hey, man, I don't know those guys. Right? The investigators then say, hey, Tom, okay, player, hit me up with your telephone. Let's just look through your phone records. We're not interested, obviously, in calls to your wife or whatever. We just want to look through your phone to see if you've been on the phone with any of these guys. If you've been texting any of these guys. Right? The investigator's not trying to write a tell-all book on Tom Brady. Everyone knows why the investigator wants Tom Brady's phone. And you know what Tom does. Tom says, nah, man, I'm not, I'm not turning this over. No, nah, I don't know those guys. And hey, hey, I'm not turning this over. Here's the problem. The guys Tom was contacting, the guys who actually deflated the balls, they turned over their phones. Their phones show calls from Tom Brady. Their phones show text messages from Tom Brady. In other words, when Tom Brady was giving press conferences and he's smiling and he's you know, laughing, and he's saying, what will they come up with next? Oh, come on. You know, when he's shaking his head as if he wouldn't be involved in this kind of sordid activity, activity he knows is sordid, because it's a legal activity that gives him an unfair advantage. Right? While Tom Brady's doing all of that, he knows that he was involved. He knows this. So let me say this, and I don't say it lightly. Right? Brady's persona with the press now has been proven to be fake. Right? When Brady talks, you have to wonder whether or not you want to believe him. Right? It's like listening to Richard Nixon, you know. You're like, whoa, you know, what, what, you know, yeah, there's, there's the part of him that opened up China, but, you know, this other Watergate part, what am I supposed to think? Right? It's like the guy in boxing who once said, yesterday I was lying to you. Today I'm telling the truth. Right? Don't get sucked in by Tom Brady's persona. Folks, inside the NFL, according to reports, He's not that popular. Let's take this one step further. Now we know that the Colts are the ones who tipped off the league before the game was played. We know that the league let the first half happen before testing the footballs to know with certainty that they were deflated. Right? We know the league has the PSI readings on the football. Now, what you might not know is what was reported by Sports Illustrated a couple days ago. In reporting the incident to the league, the league had the Colts, had their equipment manager, Sean Sullivan, prepare an email. And the email says in it that it was, here's the quote, well known around the league. Let me repeat that. Well known around the league. End of quote. That Patriot balls were deflated. That the Patriot quarterback preferred deflated footballs. Now think about it. You're Roger Goodell. I'm telling you, every team in this league, right, is hoping to win the Super Bowl. If it's well known around the league, as Roger Goodell does his investigation, you're going to have a bunch of team owners come out of the woodwork. You're going to have a bunch of personnel people from different teams come out of the woodwork with their suspicions about what the Patriots have been doing with regard to the footballs. 
right now Brady's already been busted with his hand in the cookie jar understand more probable than not equates to a preponderance of the evidence civil legal standard right Brady's already been busted you can imagine if Roger Goodell who works for the owners as a bunch of owners come up to him with concerns about this right if he just sends around a memo to the league saying anyone with information about this contact my office I'm guessing a bunch of people are gonna contact the office right if you're busted for driving under the influence once chances are you've driven under the influence several times before that the Patriots were busted with deflated balls in this AFC championship game you cannot tell me that this is the first time they did this this might be the first time it can be proven but you can't tell me it's the first time they did this especially when the emails show that Brady first started complaining about the inflation of the balls several games earlier after the jet game right keep in mind in these text messages etc one Patriot employee literally calls himself the deflator when Tom Brady passes the 50,000 career passing mark he signs the football and gives it to these guys the guys deflating footballs right understand that memorabilia is worth tens of thousands of dollars Brady was paying for the deflation of the footballs right so the people who are claiming that this equates to the Salem witch hunts the people who are claiming that Tom Brady can get fined and then just continue on with his life and will play opening day against the Steelers those people are nuts right the coach of the Saints got suspended a year for bounty gate a year right here you have a guy who's literally paying for rules violations that give him an unfair advantage in an NFL playoff game and then the guy tries to cover it up after the fact in my opinion Brady's out at least four weeks if he gets four weeks he's lucky I wouldn't be surprised if Brady's out eight games if not longer also just think about how serious this is if you had heard that Jameis Winston was using deflated balls at Florida State or that Marcus Mariota was using deflated balls at Oregon how far in the NFL draft would they have fallen would these guys have even been first round picks just last year you had an excellent quarterback one of the top talents from last year's draft Teddy Bridgewater have questions about whether his hands were big enough to grip the football Bridgewater went very late in the first round in part over those concerns very late in the first round right my point to you is this if you believe a Jameis Winston or a Marcus Mariota would have fallen in the draft if you heard that they were participating in some illegal scheme to deflate footballs and had used deflated footballs in some of the key games of their season right the SEC championship the ACC championship right the Pac-12 championship game whatever and that's the same way Tom Brady's reputation has tumbled in his neighborhood how could anyone put him on the same level with an Otto Graham a Johnny Unitas or a Joe Montana none of whom have had a scandal like this what would you think about Bill Walsh 
and the San Francisco 49ers and Joe Montana if you heard that they were beneficiaries of some scheme to deflate footballs. And if you heard that Montana was actually paying for the deflation of footballs, that certainly wouldn't help their reputation. It would diminish it. Right? Tom Brady's a great quarterback. The fourth quarter of the Super Bowl is among the best played quarters I have ever seen. A quarterback play ever. And I'm talking about the last quarter Tom Brady played. In my opinion, Brady is an elite talent. An elite talent. But you're kidding yourself if you don't think this isn't a major part. A major part of the Tom Brady biography. You don't, you know, you're kidding yourself if you don't think that this doesn't greatly diminish his legacy and his reputation. It's hard to even envision what we thought about Tom Brady before all of this happened, right? I'm just telling you, expect the suspension. It's going to have to be several days. Didn't the league just give Greg Hardy a 10-game suspension? Right? Didn't Adrian Peterson, you know, remain out of football and have to fight his way back to eligibility? In this political climate, for this terrible offense, with this terrible cover-up, this quarterback is going to be hit, and he's going to be hit hard. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.